Hi, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Welcome to this uh, video series on Flare projects in Madcap Central. So yeah, this is the first video I am going to talk about binding or uploading Flare projects up into Central. Now, the rest of the videos in this series, you wanna see those, all you need to do is go to the very, very end of this video. You're gonna see a link to a playlist where you can get to the rest of them. So when you go into your Madcap Central license, you're going to see projects on the left side and you open that and that will list all of the Flare projects that you've already uploaded into Central. And so then once they're uploaded, you can do things with them. Keep in mind though, that just because you get your Flare projects or copies of them, that's what these are. They're clones of your local Flare projects. Just because you upload them to Central, that doesn't mean that uh, Flare goes away or anything. Central doesn't take the place of Flare. It just enhances what you're able to do up in the cloud. So why upload or bind your Flare projects to Central? Well, here are the big reasons for doing that. Number one, it automatically provides you with a source control solution as soon as you bind your, your project to it. And source control is super important, especially if you have an authoring team. Lone writers can use source control too, it's great, but it is really, really important when you got a team of writers working on the same Flare project to keep everybody's changes in sync. Now, if you're just brand new to source control or you maybe you know some about it, but you really want to understand more, what I would do is go and look at our uh, series of videos, our Flare series of videos on source control. So you just go to the Madcap software website and look for the, the Flare videos and it's and they're in there. There's there's uh, you know almost a dozen videos on source control that you can check out and learn all about it. So that's one reason, source control solution. Number two, you, once you have your Flare projects uploaded to Central, you're able to build output just like you can in Flare. All right, so you, uh, you can build away uh, to your heart's content, but not only can you build, you can also use Central to host the output. So a lot of people, they want to get their output out to their customers, but maybe you have a, it's a small shop, you know, it's a small company and you just, you don't even have an IT department. You're just not sure how to go about doing this. No problem. It's real easy in, uh, in Central, you use what are called sites and that just provides all the, all the settings, however you want your output uh, to become available to people, whether it's available to the public at large or maybe to uh, its private output just for a certain group of users. All right, so building and hosting your output. Another reason to uh, bind your projects to Madcap Central is for topic reviews. So you can send reviews uh, from your Flare project to different people that you associate with on your, your central license. And so these can be other authors or they can just be subject matter experts. And you, they can then look at your topics and your snippets, your files up there on central in a really easy uh, editor. So they're just, uh, they're just making edits and adding comments and submitting. And you can have multiple people editing, reviewing the same, uh, the same files at the same time. It's really easy for them. They just edit and submit, and then you get notified and you deal with their reviews. So it's really, really great for that. And then there are also uh, things called checklists, project checklists. So there, when you're working in a Flare project, there's tons and tons of things that you need to do. You need to keep track of when you're uh, editing all these files. Did I do this? Did I do that? So Central allows you to create these uh, custom checklists and uh, mark them off to change the status. This thing is in progress. This thing's done. This thing's not applicable. 
And you, so you create all the columns, all the things you want to keep track of, and it ties into your Flare projects, which is really super cool. No, nothing else can do this. So you're able to populate your checklist with just the files that you want to keep track of for anything. It's a really, really, really cool thing. So let's take a look at the steps for uploading your Flare projects to Central. And not just that, we're also going to look at importing projects from Central too, because one person, uh, maybe you, maybe somebody else on your team, uploads the Flare project to Central, but then other people on the team, they can import it. And that is going to allow you, uh, you all to have the same copies of the same project, and then you can use that source control to keep everything in sync. So first of all, before you upload your project to Central, and you do that from Flare, we wanna look in Central because you wanna make sure that you have the right permissions. So first of all, you're logged in and you go to your user settings. And once you're in there, you wanna look at your permissions. So this comes up, and you can see, I have all the permissions that are available, all the administrative ones and all the project ones. Uh, and permissions can also be set per project, but these are my global permissions. I just have permissions across the board. So in order to upload projects to Madcap Central, you need to have this permission right here. So just make sure you have that and you're good to go. Okay, so now let's go into Flare and let's actually upload one of these projects. All right, so I have a little sample project here called Flare Project. And the first thing that I wanna do is click on the View ribbon and you go to Madcap Central. And this opens up now, if you're not already logged in to your central license, your email and your password that you've set up, there will be fields in here where you can do that. And then once you're logged in, your name and your avatar, they're gonna show up in here. So the next thing that you do is you click this little button right here to upload your project to Central. That brings up this dialogue. Now, a lot of people, probably most people just have one license, one Central license. and so. It'll, it'll just be here. But if, you're, if you happen to have multiple licenses, you can select, from, uh, select the one that you want to direct this to from this dropdown. It's already gonna put in the name of your project in here. So you most likely just wanna keep that the same. And uh, I am just, you can also add a, a project description if you want. I'm just gonna put sample project, but maybe you wanna put something in there that just uh, describes real briefly what your project is about. And then you just click OK. So this is way simpler than uh, trying to bind your project to source control uh, using uh, to other providers in the Flare interface. That is uh, relatively simple too, as long as you have the right information, but you can uh, the you know the server and, and all the information that the different providers uh, make you have, but you can see if you have a central license, just how easy this was. You're already already done, says the bind is successful. So you just click OK. Once it's bound, then this central window pane populates with just basic information about your project and it's binding to central. So now that it's bound, we can go on to central and we can see it listed with those other projects. Now, if you don't have your uh, central license, uh, the path to it bookmarked on your browser, uh, you can always get to it from here in the central window pane. Just click on this little button and it's going to open it up in your browser. So now we go back into projects and you can see the Flare project listed here. And it's got its own little avatar, which you can update. At. And then you can see that because I uploaded it, I'm automatically associated with this project. And you can also associate Flare projects with Teams. Teams are set up here. And so Teams just kind of connect users and projects together. So 
It just lets Central know, oh, who's, who's, uh, who's associated with this project and this team, it just kind of connects it all. So now that we've uploaded it, you want other users, other writers on your team to get this. So first thing you need to do is you want to make sure that they are associated with the project. And there are a couple of ways to do that. I just mentioned teams and users themselves. So you can go into users and let's see. So I've got a whole bunch in here. We can, we can uh, make Jeff Lebowski uh, a person who's associated with this project. So I can just click on that. All right, I'm cutting into this video here because since uh, I last recorded this uh, video, the UI has changed a little bit. So what you see now is this access option. That's what it's called now. And when you select it, you're going to see the teams and projects associated with this person. And you can see Jeff Lebowski is associated with two teams and eight projects. And if I wanted to give him access to another project because I have user administrative permissions, I can do this. I just click edit. It opens this up. I'm gonna collapse teams and come down and maybe this is the one that I want them to be associated with. And then I just click save. And now you can see he's associated with nine projects instead of eight. He has, uh, he's associated with that one and he can do things with it. Another thing I wanna mention is that the connection behavior between users, teams, and projects is different than it used to be in the past. It used to be that if you uh, associated a person with a team and that team was associated with projects, the user became associated with those projects automatically. And that's no longer the case uh, because what would happen then is if you you know, removed that team, then the user, then that would be, um, you know, they wouldn't have access to the project anymore. So now these associations are just separate. You associate people with the teams separately and associate them with projects separately. I'm going to go back to projects and you can see now it's not just me, but it's Jeff Lebowski who is associated with the project as well. So I can add lots of people to this. The other thing though, if I want Jeff Lebowski to be able to get the copy of this project, we need to make sure he has the right permissions. So again, because I have administrative permissions, I can, I can go in there and, and set his. So I'm going to go back into his profile and I'm going to go down to permissions and he has all the permissions too. He's, he's got everything. You don't necessarily want everybody on central to have all the permissions, but in this case he does. The ones that are the one that's uh, important here is this import poll. That is going to allow him to Im to to import that down onto his local machine. Okay, so he's all set up. Now, what he will do, uh, he will open up Flare. Okay, he uh, when he opens it up, it will be like uh, like this. He won't have a project open. It'll just be empty and he'll open up central and he'll log in. So instead of seeing my name and avatar and email in here, you'll see, he'll see his, right? And so instead of clicking this button, the upload project to Madcap Central, don't have a project open right now, that's why you don't see it enabled, he'll click this button right here, import project from central. So it's this that opens up and there's the license. And then he just has to go in and select the project. And in this case, it's this one, this Flare project that he's associated with. And then he can go in and select where he wants this. He'll click this ellipsis button, go in and select wherever he wants to keep this. And he'll click OK, and it will import that project. And now he's connected to. And that is how easy it is to get a team of users uh, associated with the same Flare project uploaded on Central. Okay, so now that you have your Flare project uploaded to Central and maybe you have other people on your team, they're connected, they've imported the Flare project too. So what's next? Well, all the things that I talked about, building output up there and uh, hosting the output uh, on Central and doing checklists. So 
There are additional movies on all those things. There's a whole series of videos on sites, which talks about hosting the output and the different things that you can do. And of course you can do all the source control stuff, including publishing branches, if you are using branching. So again, I would go check out the series of videos, the flare videos on uh, source control, because I go way deeper into source control there than I am going to go in this series of videos. So check out those as well. All right, so we're on our way and I will see you in the next video in this series.